Uh, today I want to talk to you guys about the flex issues with this gear setup. Uh, now the way the way these work is these rag joints are the things that take most of the torque. These are the thing. These two rag joints right here are what drive this whole thing. The way it works, we all. You know, if you haven't built one of these, you know what I'm saying, you're going to learn. If you have built one of these, you know what I'm saying, hopefully this will give you some answers to some of the issues that you have. Right. Now, the way you install this is obviously you take the brake arm off first. You put the cut rag joint on the inside and the solid rag joint on the outside. And then you line up the two holes with each other. All right. You put the gear on. Overneath here, plus you line the holes up with the with the rag joints, and then you take one of these. There's three of these. They come in the back. They go on the back, and then you put the three inch and three quarter bolt through, and you tighten it all down to the specified torque, or whatever. You know what I'm saying? The Chinese version of it's probably not even close to right. So, you know what I'm saying? Um, this kit comes with them stupid nylon lock. Plastic insert lock nuts, you know what I'm saying? They work, they sometimes they don't work, you over tight them or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Me, I use case hardened number eight bolt. But anyways, this is what you'll experience. So I just started wheel doing this. Is what happens is, is as you're driving along, the spokes are what drive the wheel forward. You know what I'm saying? The test so all the tension, all the torque, everything is, is exerted by the spokes, and then it has a tendency to wobble like this as you're going along because you know you accelerate, you decelerate. The torque exhibited on the wheel has a tendency to make the wheel wobble like this as you're rolling along 20, 25 miles an hour. So that puts a lot of stress on it. it weakens the joints, it weakens the spokes, it tears up the rag joint, it could lead to un, you know, uneven wobble. The worst thing is, is that it destroys the bearings inside the wheel and then pretty soon the bearings are all loose and the wheel's all wobbly like this. And before you know it, you've destroyed the wheel. Right? The whole point is, is that it's because of these two rubber rag joints that are driving the whole thing forward. There's really nothing you can do about it because if you over tighten it, then you strip out the bolts. If you leave it too loose, then you, you rip your, you shred your spokes and all this stuff. These are brand new wheels. This, this one is was expensive. Right? It's not easy to replace one of these every couple of months. Right? So what you want to do is we, we discovered this new this new setup that's a, that's a hub adapter that bolts over the hub with three bolts that come out that has an adapter plate that you can put this on. Right, that it, it bolts the whole thing to the hub, so that now that the hub is actually driving the wheel instead of the spokes, it seems to me that that's a better way to go. Um, we're, I'm saving up the money to buy this right now, so as soon as we get it done and I get it attached, I'll make another video, right? You know, doing how it is. But but that's the reason why most of the time these wheels fail is because you don't keep proper maintenance on your joint right here on your rag on your setup, and it leads to that in a wobble because it's too loose right here or it's not tight enough or whatever it's out of alignment or whatever it's slipped this way or that way between because the bolts travel through the holes the triangles of the spokes here right so there, there's, there's a limited amount of, of give and take here and flex and forward and motion and all that stuff it's going to eventually do this it's going to no matter what in my opinion this is the weakest link of the whole speeder bike setup is these crazy rag joint thing but hey that's the way they designed it that's the way it works for most of us, you know what I'm saying? That's why we have aftermarket geniuses to come up with products after the fact so that we can make our stuff better. I strongly recommend that you take a look into the hub adapter because it's a way better system than this right here. Otherwise, you're probably going to end up being like me and, and half of the other speeder bike guys that discovered this problem a little bit too late, destroyed wheel, had to spend a bunch of money, a bunch more money, blah, blah, blah. Right? Take a look into it. Right, it's called the hub adapter. Thank you. Here's another. Here's another issue that you can have that leads to all of this craziness, right? And that's that's your spokes are not like you got the correct amount of tension and your wheel is out of true. When your wheel is in true, it's really simple. When your wheel is in true, it's round this way, right? And it's lined up this way where it's straight. So that when you spin it, right, it turns true like that. It's completely round. That's a true wheel. Now, when your wheel gets out of true or starts getting out of true, it's because some of your spokes are loose. 
right? All this, you know, we all know how a wheel works. The nipple right here, the spoke screws into it, then it's just a little hole in the hub right here, and it keeps the tension on the wheel, it keeps it round. Right? When you start to lose tension, it, it depends. If you got a couple of loose spokes on this side, then it's going to bow out it this way. If you got a couple of loose spokes up here, then it's going to bow in that way. It's really simple to keep your wheels in true. It's not that hard, and you don't need one of them big million dollar fancy machines. All you really need is something that's going to hold the wheel up off the ground and right here and clamp the axle in so that you can spin it freely so that you can watch it spin. And then the way that you, uh, you tighten the spokes is you get your little spoke tool and you spin it around and, you, and where, it's, where, it, where it bows out, right? You spin to the other side and you tighten those opposite spokes or you loosen them whichever way it goes and you just keep going and keep going until your wheel is true. If you make sure that your wheel is true before you mount this up, and then after you mount the gear and the rag joints or the hub adapter, however system you want to do it, then you put the wheel back on the chewing stand and you spin it again to make sure that it's true, right? Because you don't know when you're, when you're dabbing it, you, you might bend one of these spokes. You might bend it out this way or that way. You make sure that it's true again before you put the tire on, right? And when the, if the wheel is true and it's all completely round, then odds are you're going to eliminate a lot of these vibration and wobble issues with this rag joint from the get-go instead of discovering it a little bit later on down the, oh my wheel's wobbling, it feels like my butt's shaking, what's going on? You break one of these spokes at 25 miles an hour in the bike lane and all these fools drive around on stupid car day, you're liable to become hamburger before you all know it. I almost did, right? So hey, Keep, make sure your wheels are true before you, you know, after you bolt it all together. I mean, yeah, some guys might choose the wheel and then bolt it all on and then not realize they're thinking that it's done. Psh, no, you got to recheck it. This is a brand new wheel right here. Right? I, I ain't buying another one of these ones for a while. I miss my red speeder bike. I like driving it. You know what I'm saying? So, hey, that's another thing that you need to look into here.